and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Lisa, also known as La Dolce Lisa, or maybe even Mrs. Claus today, <laughs> because today we are going to be doing an exciting video for Christmas time. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make my favorite cookies, pretty much my favorite cookies to have during this time of year, and that is my ginger molasses cookies. If you're familiar with your typical gingerbread cookie, this has the same flavors, but instead of being crunchy, it's going to be a nice, soft and chewy cookie with maybe like a slight crisp on the outside, but it's going to be so good and delicious. I can't wait to show you how to make them. And on top of that, I'm going to be doing a little holiday spin and I will be decorating these to look super cute for Christmas time. So I'll show you how to do that as well. So if you would like to learn how to make these ginger molasses cookies, please keep watching and go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. So this recipe is actually as easy as it is delicious. So let's start with the dry ingredients first, that way we can set them aside and have them ready when we need them. So first things first, I have two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour right in this bowl. And to that, I'm going to be adding one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. So right into the flour mixture. I have the spices ready to go. So what I have here is two and a half teaspoons of ginger two and a half teaspoons of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of allspice, and half a teaspoon of salt. So I have that right in this mix and I'm going to be adding this to the flour mixture. This is what's going to make these ginger molasses cookies super spicy and delicious. So be sure to be using a fresh ingredients. Make sure that your ginger and your cinnamon haven't gone stale because then they will lose some flavor. So we're just going to be giving these ingredients a quick mix. And now that my dry mix is ready to go and all of the dry ingredients are incorporated, I'm going to be setting that aside. And now it's time to work on the batter. So we have three fourths of a cup of butter or one and a half sticks if that's what you're using. We're going to be adding this right to the KitchenAid and this is unsalted room temperature butter. What's important about this butter is that it is at room temperature. All of the ingredients should really be at room temperature to ensure a better tasting and better textured cookie. So try not to melt the butter, just try to leave it out for about an hour or two. That way it is nice and room temperature. Now we are going to be adding the sugars. Half a cup of white sugar right into the mix. And I have half a cup of packed brown sugar that is going right to the butter and sugar mix. So as you can see, that brown sugar was quite packed. And before we add the rest of our ingredients, we are going to be giving this a whip to incorporate. So we're going to be doing this on a medium to low speed for about two minutes. The butter and sugar seem to have whipped up nicely. The color is a little bit pale and that's what we want. So now we are just going to be adding the molasses. This is one quarter of a cup of molasses right into the mixture. This little tiny spatula is actually good to push this through because you wanna scrape out every little bit of molasses. I like to add this molasses right before I add the egg, that way the mixture doesn't really curdle. So we're just going to be adding the molasses and giving this a 30 second whip. Now that we have the butter and all of the sugars combined, it is time for the final wet ingredient, one large egg, and it is also room temperature, right in the mix. And we are just going to be whipping this for maybe a minute or so. Now that the batter is basically almost done, last thing we need is the dry mixture that we made earlier so we're going to add this I would say I'm going to be adding this about a third at a time until this bowl is empty so one third of the flour mix in a couple spins and then I'm going to keep going don't forget that during this whole process especially if you're using a stand mixer like me you'll probably have to scrape the sides of the bowl okay so my assistant and I have already tasted the batter and it tastes good as it is <laughs> but of course we can't make this off yet so I transferred this into this small bowl and just going to be covering this with plastic wrap and putting this in the fridge for one hour. That one hour in the fridge is crucial because it helps the flavors develop and it gives a nicer looking cookie I find when I usually keep the dough in the fridge. And I will see you guys back in one hour for when I roll these and bake them. So it's about an hour later, I just took my dough out of the fridge and it is nice and chilled and ready to roll. So what I have here is about a quarter of a cup of coarse sugar. I'm just using organic sugar cane sugar. I like that the granules are more coarse, but you can even use just regular granulated or caster sugar. So what I'm doing is with this ice cream scooper, I feel like this gives me about two inch round cookies. I'm just scooping out the dough 
rolling it with my hands, with clean hands of course, and then I'm going to be dipping this in this sugar, just giving it a little roll around and coating all the sides. This will give your ginger molasses cookies that nice crunch on the outside, so it's really nice with that soft gooey center. And I'm just going to lightly press down on the cookies just a bit so that they bake evenly when they are on the tray. Now give these some space when you're placing them down because they do spread out quite a bit. So you'll just want to space them out, I mean at least a cookie's width in between, so pretend there's an invisible cookie right in between the batter. So I'm just going to be scooping out these cookies and doing that for the entire batch right here. Let's see how many I can fit on this tray before I pop these in the oven. You might be able to hear, but my oven is preheating to 350 right now. Now on this tray I managed to fit 12, but there's still some leftover dough, so I feel like in this batter, you should be able to get out about 16 cookies or more or less, depending on how big or small you roll these. I'm going to be popping these into this oven for, oh, perfect timing. Okay, so you'll want to bake those cookies on parchment paper in a 350 degree oven for about eight to nine minutes. You shouldn't really bake them longer than nine minutes because then they won't be as soft and chewy on the inside. Now that my cookies have finally finished baking, they are out of the oven and they are cooling down, we can now make the decorative part that goes on top. And guys, it really couldn't be easier, but it adds such a beautiful touch. You of course don't have to do this to all the cookies, and I won't, I'll just do it to some of the cookies, but it makes them look so festive and cute. So what I have here is some white chocolate. I used about three ounces, you know those cubes of Baker's white chocolate. I just used half of that and I diced it up. And now we're going to melt this chocolate in the microwave. Now how I melt this chocolate is I usually put it in for 30 seconds, give it a mix, put it in for another 20 seconds, give it another mix. If it's ready, fine. If it's not, another 10 seconds and you're good to go. You always want to be very careful when melting white chocolate. And on top of that, I have these cute little festive sprinkles and I'm going to show you how I use these in just a second. I have most of my cookies here ready to decorate. This batch made exactly 16 cookies. It could have maybe made more if I didn't eat so much batter, but there you go. They're a little bit chubby and fluffy and a little bit crinkly. They look amazing, but we're not done yet because like I said, we are going to be decorating some of these for the holidays. So I have a plastic baggie here. This is my favorite trick when it comes to piping anything. I'm just going to be putting this in a cup, folding it over, and now this white chocolate that we melted is absolutely perfect. Those amounts of seconds usually work the best for white chocolate, so let's just get all of that melted white chocolate into this plastic baggie right here. Perfect. This little spatula has come in handy. <laughs> and we're just going to give this a little twist. You don't have to worry about sealing this because that will be fine. Now with scissors, I'm just going to cut off a tiny little snippet of the tip. What I'm doing is just drizzling that white chocolate onto the cookie. I'm almost going halfway through. I find that looks the most elegant. And now that I've finished with the white chocolate drizzle, they would look even nice like this. I feel like that is so classy. But I happen to find these really cute holiday sprinkles, and I feel like this is going to make them look so festive and cute. So you actually need a pair of tweezers. Make sure they're, of course, clean because I feel like they're so tiny, they're really just hard to do. So I'm going to be placing them onto the cookie and I will show you how I arrange these to give it that nice Christmas decorative feel. Of course, you can just sprinkle these on if you would like, but I find that I like to make a little decorative pattern here. So it's basically like Christmas trees and like little red dots, and I'm sort of arranging them to look like Christmas holly. I have finished baking and decorating, and I have to say that it was actually super easy, super simple, even in terms of the decoration. I mean, just that little finishing touch went a long way because look how beautiful these are. I, of course, left a few plain, but here we have this beautiful, ginger molasses cookie dressed so festively some of them i put three hollies and some of them only two so you can decorate at your leisure but here we go and i'm about to bite into this cookie mm, wow the best <laughs> If you guys love ginger molasses cookies and you've never been able to master the perfect ginger molasses cookies, those kinds that you buy at the really good bakeries, this is the recipe for you. 
follow all of these steps, I will also have the link to my blog post where I write down the recipe and written instructions for you as well. Guys, you have to give this a try. This is the perfect ginger molasses cookie. The outside is nice and crisp since we have that sugar coating and it is also just a little bit crisp from the baking time. And the inside is soft and gooey and chewy. You can see how soft and delicious it is. My mouth is like watering. I have to eat another bite. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will of course have some more Christmas baking videos to come, but I really hope you enjoyed this one. It was an easy enough recipe and it is super effective because it is gorgeous and it is delicious. So thank you guys so much for watching and I really hope that you do give these cookies a try. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below. But for now, I just wanna say happy baking, Merry Christmas and happy holidays to you all. Bye. These are perfect. No, they're so good, eh? I'm so excited. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. <laughs> okay, and they look so pretty. The recipe. Yeah, you got it now. <laughs> mm, these are really freaking good. I know. Thank you.